Hello, welcome back to Miss Finance. Today we're going to go ahead and have a look at an extended trial balance with a year end of 31st of December 2020. So when you look at an extended trial balance for the first time, it can be a little bit confusing because what you're going to have is a list of ledger items on the left. So where we've got opening inventory, purchases, sales, wages, gas, land and buildings, that sort of thing. And from here, it's not necessarily that easy when you first have a look to understand where things go in terms of do they sit on the statement of profit and loss account or do they sit on the statement of financial position? So just to make this a little bit easier for you initially, what I've done here is I've highlighted anything that is a statement of profit and loss item to so something that sits in your income statement in a blue colour, as you can see here, and anything that's in a green actually sits on the statement of financial position or balance sheet. So I'm just going to run down each of these very quickly and tell you what they are first of all. So this line here, opening inventory, is shown as a debit in the profit and loss account and a credit on the statement statement of financial position because effectively that is inventory brought forward from last year so stock that we've got in the accounts from last year brought forward into this year now the reason why that is a debit so a plus figure in the statement of profit and loss is because when we're working out what we call cost of sales we have our open inventory plus our purchases less our closing inventory so if that here is 13,000 and we've made 35,000 of purchases minus our closing inventory for the year, that therefore means that the movement in the year, the cost of sales this year is 37,500. So that there is a plus, that's a plus and that's a minus. Now, if we look here, sales income in the statement of profit and loss is a credit. So that's the income that you've received from customers in the year. Now. These here, admin expenses, wages, rent paid, gas, etc., are all debits in the statement of profit and loss. When we're looking at the statement of profit and loss, costs in there are going to be a debit, aka shown as a plus, and any income is going to be a credit, shown as a negative. So if I just move that over here, I'm going to go through the journal adjustments and how you would post each of these in a set of financial statements so that you can get a better understanding. For instance, opening inventory is going to be a debit to the P&L and a credit to inventory. Purchases is going to be a debit to the P&L. Let's just make that a bit nicer. And it's going to be a credit to either your purchase ledger control account. So if you've bought something on credit, it's going to go to the purchase ledger control account. If you've paid for it that day, it's going to go to the bank or if you've paid for it in cash it might come out of your cash account if you've got one now if we look at sales income to record sales income that's going to be a credit to the p l and if you've sold to a customer on credit then that's going to go to the sales ledger control account or if they've paid for it there and then it will go to bank or cash any of these so admin expenses rent etc is going to be the same as how we treat purchases in terms of the journal into the PL account is a debit and whether that be something that you've purchased on credit is going to go to the purchase ledger's control account or if you've paid for it that day it's going to be either credit bank or credit cash now land and buildings is an asset so it's an asset on the statement of financial position and because it's an asset it's shown as a positive so a debit now if you think of the original journal entry to record that asset that cost in the accounts you're going to debit cost on the balance sheet and you'll be crediting either the bank so if you've paid for it that day or you're going to be crediting a loan from the bank or you might be crediting the trade payables accounts otherwise known as the purchase ledger control account it just depends on how that asset has been purchased furnitures and fittings is also an asset so that's going to be treated in the same way so that doesn't hit the p l account what does hit the P&L account is when we calculate depreciation or amortization. So depreciation is on what we call tangible assets. So if something's tangible, it means you can touch it. We might have amortization then on intangible assets, which are the likes of customer listings, goodwill. So something that you can't physically touch necessarily. Now, if we move down to the sales ledger control account, this corresponds with the likes of when you record in sales income. So this is that journal entry there. So when we look at the sales ledger control account, the original entry there has been a credit to the P&L account and a debit to sales ledger control account. So this is a list of the outstanding balances from customers owed on invoices that you've billed to them. So if you've got £13,000 there, it means that you've got £13,000 
account yet to be received from customers. So again, that was just credit P&L and debit sales ledger control account. So the bank is an asset on the statement of financial position because that's money in your bank. Now, if that was a negative, so if that was shown as a credit over here, it would mean that the bank is overdrawn. So if the bank is a positive, it means that there's money in the bank. If the bank is a negative, it means the bank is overdrawn. Now, drawings is just simply where a business owner has taken money out of the business. So the journal entries for drawings is to debit drawings and credit the bank because that's effectively an individual taking money out of the business. Now again, a loan from the bank, that is a liability because that's money that's due to the bank. So the original entries there would have been to debit the bank for money received and credit it loan account. Now the purchase ledger control account again is where we've recorded purchase invoices that we've not yet paid. So the original entry again would have been this one up here where we've had a debit to the P&L for the cost but credit purchase ledger control account because we've not yet paid that off. So that's why that's a liability or a negative on the UTB because it's money that we owe to somebody else. So if I was looking at the VAT control account and I was looking at sales, I would credit sales in the profit and loss account with the net figure of an invoice. I would credit the VAT control account and I would debit the sales ledger control account for the gross value. So here, if I have, let's say, the sales income is 155,000 times by 20%, that gives me 31,000. Here, let's imagine my purchases come to 100,000 times that by 20%, that only gives me 20,000. So here you can see that my sales outweigh my purchases. So if my sales outweigh purchases, that means that I actually owe money to HMRC. And the only way to clear this down would be to make a payment. So if I was to make a payment, that would be, let's do 31 minus 20, 11. And the entries for there would have to be debit VAT control account and credit the bank. So that then nets off. Now down here, We've got closing inventory. So closing inventory, as we've seen over here, is a minus figure in the profit and loss account because it's an asset in the statement of financial position because it's stock that you've got held in your accounts that you can then sell later down the line. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of what an ETB is and the original journal entries for each of those items on there. And in the next video, I'm going to go through a couple of adjustment journals just to show you exactly what that looks like.